everyone welcome back to the channel in today's video i'll be telling you how i was able to complete nearly all the topics of each of the courses for um, all of the gcse science subjects um, for the higher levels so this was gcse physics gcse biology and gcse chemistry now thinking about this clearly the courses for each of the uh, subjects for the, the GCSE sciences takes up to a total of two to three years to complete and it's and to, um, I was able to complete this in just a matter of weeks to be specific six weeks so in this video I'll be sharing uh, I'll be sharing some tips and tricks on how you could literally complete the whole course before anyone in your class does and you'll have more time for revision exam practice so you can stay top of the class and get the best grades you want for your GCSEs and before we start the video I want you to really hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you are notified for all the videos that I make and hit that like button as well if you enjoyed the video comment down below on any other GCSE video content you want and check out my 11 plus playlist if you haven't already for mastering the 11 plus exam the preparation so let's get into the video now i was able to complete the courses as i said for each of the science subjects that takes two to three years on an average if you're in school and i what i did was i took advantage of the online learning that we had at home uh, it gave me more time because as um I, as I used to go to a grammar school um, and this wasn't in my local area so I had to travel a lot meaning I didn't get enough time at home when I came home I just had time for homework and maybe maybe like 30 minutes of revision so it wasn't uh, for this revision is for tests so I didn't get any type of some extracurricular activities as well as some topics I could review for the next day or for the next week or so and I wanted to take advantage of the time that I had the spare time um, and this was not, not necessarily me who made this decision my parents wanted me to do it so I did it and what I basically did was um, made a strict but simple timetable so all I did was got a piece of paper drew some lines on them and um, it just made a timetable for me that every week on the weekends I would have a test of two chapters not one two chapters for each of the science subjects so not GCSE physics chemistry and biology all in one week just one of them as well as one um, not so important subject maybe French uh, maybe computer science uh, and uh, English uh, um, grammar uh, checking but computer science is not as important as it will be in the next year as I haven't fully started the GCSE course for it as I'm not in year 10 and that's the rule in my school um, so what I did was so after I got the timetable I had to revise two chapters uh, every week for one of the science subjects so let's take for example GCSE biology I had to revise cell biology as well as non-communicable and communicable diseases for physics energy and space and chemistry bonding and structure as well as um, chemistry in the atmosphere now it does seem like a lot and it is actually a lot and um, it was all too much for me it was overwhelming and at first I was like no I can't do it I need to do only one chapter and even when I did that it was just too much so I had to stay committed and what I just did was I started revising so first my technique was to read the pages um, then understand it and then I um, tried to take out the key points and revise them off by heart because uh, when my parents or my family tested me they t uh, tested me on the questions on that page which I necessarily didn't take that much time on because I had so much revised but after a few uh, after a few tests I learned that it's important to go through the questions as well and there was also some exam questions on the back of that book now if you're wondering which books I use for the GCSE science subjects hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you're tuned uh, in for the next few videos in which I'll show you uh, which science books I use and um, I'll tell you a quick hint it's not this GCSE CGP science books as I believe they're not the most effective um, but more of that in the next future videos so what I did was after I realized that um, I necessarily wasn't ahead of it like I didn't have a few days to go through um, everything that I revised I maybe had like 30 minutes left before I used to complete it so I completed everything bang on on the day that was a test and I'm also going to give you a review on if this is really effective um, if you want to stay on the top of the class yes of course if you're capable of doing this if you know that you have the time if you know that you are interested of um, going ahead of the topics if you want more time for exam techniques and revision then I would recommend it because this is something I need to do because if I stay at the same pace as class I believe I won't be able to perform as effective and as good as 
other people and I um, predict myself to do so and in f for that to happen I need to revise and go through the topics quickly of course this doesn't mean that I know everything right now I might have forgotten some key topics uh, for cell biology I might have forgotten some of the key um, uh, some of the key diseases um, for uh, for the infections and homeostasis chapters, but that's okay because at least I know the overall like uh, overall key key key, um, key topics and key knowledge. And after you have that pre knowledge, you're able to um, apply that to the current work that you're doing in school, and this is really effective. Now, if you think you're not able to do this, uh, then don't worry. This is not always for everyone and it's challenging for me as well but I was luckily able to complete it of course I don't continue that now I do have two topics left for each of those subjects maybe three for physics uh, as I didn't spend as much time as I did for biology and chemistry but that's all right because I'll be I'll be able to restart this uh, six week kind of timetable plan next year and um, if you're not able to do it then like I said don't worry you can do your own ways you can stay uh, at the same place as your same pace as your class and uh, maybe you'll still be able to perform effectively but this is for the students who think that they need that extra head start they need that extra pace before everyone starts the race so they're able to um stay on top of their game so that's basically i just wanted to share a quick technique on how i was able to complete the whole course uh thank you for watching this video it, um it's a quick video but i just wanted to explain how i was able to do it um so hit that subscribe button like i said more gcse content will be coming out um and comment down below on videos that you want to see and um if you haven't checked out my lm plus playlist then check that out as well i also will be making extra um, interesting videos so like I made a Rubik's Cube video so if you haven't checked that out as well um, check that out subscribe and yeah I'll catch you in the next one bye